your data, you probably want to calculate some summary statistics, such as averages and measurements of variance. Um, now you can see I've filled in some values here. Um, bear in mind, these are all imaginary values, so these don't represent the true specific energies of these, um, these substances. Um, something I just wanted to show you is that um, as well as just being able to drag um, a single cell down and that'll copy the formulae down, you can also drag a whole, you know, a whole group of uh, formulae, drag those down, um, and it will populate the cells with the correct formulae that you need in each case. Okay, so you can see that rather than doing things on a calculator, we can very quickly um, uh, make a lot of calculations here. Okay, so I've got methanol and I've got ethanol, and I want to calculate the average specific energy of each of those. Um, so again, um, Excel can do this quite easily. There's a formula called average, so I just type in, so I'm going to say this is going to be the average specific energy. Um, again, this is going to be the same unit, so it's also going to be in megajoules per kilogram. Um, and I'm going to use the formula average equals A V E R A G E E. Now, Excel uses the term average. What we're actually calculating is the mean. The mean is a type of average. Then I type in average, then I type in open brackets, and I select the cells I want to calculate the average of. In this case, it's these three. Close brackets, and it's calculated. So this is now the average of these three values. Now, instead of having to type that out again, I can just press Command C, do it down here again, and now you can see if I click on it, it's doing the average of these cells here. Um, so just so you know where it says K5 colon K7 means all the cells from K5 to K7. Now, let's say I want to do a summary statistic like um, standard deviation. Deviation um, of specific energy. Again, it's going to be the same units, megajoules per kilogram. Um, so here, the formula is, if I type in ST, it already gives me an idea of the different formulae that I can use. I'm going to use ST dev. And again, I just, so you can see it automatically opens the bracket, so it expects me here to give the cells that I want to calculate the standard deviation of. I want to calculate the standard deviation of these three cells. So I highlight them, close brackets, and enter. And again, I can just copy paste that down there. Um, I can also, I also want to give these values to the same number of decimal places as the raw data, which is these. And when I say raw data, I mean the values that they're calculated from. So for this, I'm just going to highlight them and again, adjust the number of decimal places to one decimal place, which is appropriate in this case. Another summary statistic for variance that I can measure is what's called the half range. The half range takes the difference between um, the highest value and the lowest value. So in this case, it would be 9.5 minus 4.5. And it divides that by two. So it's half the range between those values. This is slightly more complicated. So here I type um, equals. And then I'm going to do um, use the value max. So it's going to take the maximum value of these three cells. And then I type minus min, I take the minimum value of these three cells. Let me move over a little bit more. And so at the moment, I'm just going to press enter, and you'll see what I mean. So it's saying that the maximum value, 9.5 minus 4.5 is 5.0. That's correct. But I want to divide that by 2. Now what I need to do is I need to put this whole thing in brackets, because I want to take the whole range, and I want to divide that by 2. So you can see it gives me now 2.5, and that's correct. I can copy it down here. Um, measurements for variance also have the same units as the data they're calculated from. Okay, so you can see, and they're not that different from each other. They're quite similar. Um, you can see that the mean for... Um, was it for methanol is lower than that for ethanol 
um, and I can see that the standard deviation for methanol is smaller than that for ethanol. That means that ethanol overall had higher values. There was also more variability in the values. Um, you can see that from the standard deviation and also from the half range. And also by looking at the values, you can see the lowest value was 23.5, the highest value was 36.6. So there's just more variation amongst those values. Um, we might say in this case that ethanol has a higher specific energy um, because we can see the mean is higher. We'd probably also say that it's significantly higher because if I was to add the standard deviation onto the mean here, and I was to subtract the standard deviation from the mean here, this value would still be lower than that value, saying that the difference is probably a real difference. It is significant. Please remember that the values I've given here, I just made up on the spot, so they are not representative values of the specific energy of these substances. Um, you need to do that yourself.